great. Um, so, thank you very much for inviting me to be part of this conversation. Um, I've been sitting there thinking, extraction. Um, how can I talk about extraction, given, given a day that's focused um, so kind of heavily on thinking around uh, mining and extraction of minerals and resources. But actually, when I started to think about uh, the work that I'm trying to do in Liverpool, where I've been now for the last five months, I suppose what I've been trying to think about is um, how is it possible to operate in a place, in a city like Liverpool, uh, at a moment of post-industry um, where the uh, situation uh, is suffering both from an extraction of industry and a, and a decline in the population. And in, a, in an interesting way, I think it links to some of the things that um, were being said on the previous panel. So that's the way that I want to um, share some of the challenges that, that I'm working with and the situation in which I'm operating. And also, I think... Um, being here and seeing the impact that these uh, events are having, I think, I've been to two now, it's my second one, um, on the conversations that are happening in this area, I'm, I'm very interested in what strategies, it, what strategies we can develop and employ to uh, think about how you operate in a place or a specific situation to uh, articulate uh, a necessity and a, and a value for cultural production um, uh, and what's necessary. So I carry in my mind at all times a number of questions which I'm, are here. And I like to think about this idea of local operations, thinking about you know, how, can, how is it possible to make the place where you are here, right now, vibrant? You know, what is here? Who is here? Uh, who's not here? And what are the urgencies? And at all times to think about what's necessary. Um, how do you make sure that you don't suffer from local echo? Um, local echo is, is, is when the internet bounces back on itself and it can't get out, and so it becomes inward facing. You know, what are the dangers of, of not being able to um, uh, communicate with other places and other kinds of thinking and reach out? How can we avoid uh, the pitfalls of, of, of working locally but retaining a kind of global and uh, mm, global connections and uh, an ambition and a world-class approach to programming. Um, and, and again, what's necessary? Um, is it possible to learn from the past but not to be limited by our experiences and how can we raise our expectations? So the conversations that I think are really essential to have, and I think that's what's interesting about this conversation, is you know, what do we want to change? What don't we want to lose? what is memorable and what would change things and what are the right questions to ask in any given situation. And I think, you know, in my experience, that's what artists do so brilliantly. They ask questions that um, are unexpected. Um, how can we grow? How can we learn? What can we teach? And can we think differently and imagine new ways forward? So, Liverpool. Um, this, is, this is where I am right now. The, the, the population of Liverpool has changed and there are about half as many people living there now than there were in uh, 1937. Obviously what that means is that um, the, the, the situation in terms of work in the city and labour and the economics of the city are um, really uh, a very challenging scenario and there's been so much work done um, over the years. Liverpool has always had a commitment to arts-led regeneration and I think in thinking about how Liverpool might reinvent itself, um, it's a very interesting um, time and challenge for us to be tackling those difficult questions around what is the value of art, you know, how does it, how does it operate in a market, of course, but how does it operate outside of a market in a place like Liverpool? <coughs> um, who lives in Liverpool? These two maps are from the Roundtree Foundation, um, and this one, the kind of lighter colours are, um, the darker colours are where the wealthier households are, and in this one, uh, the poorer households are the darker colours. So you can see a very straightforward north-south divide. Um, you can see that the distribution of, uh, of wealth isn't, you know, I mean, we know this. So, um, Liverpool's present, similar to everywhere else, where we had uh, young people uh, being very dissatisfied with the pol political situation, people taking to the streets, taking things into their own hands, 
um, but Liverpool's past, a very grand place, uh, somewhere that was linked to the rest of the world and somewhere from where you departed to take up new lives but also where you arrived. Um, a port city and a shrinking city. And, and um, I wanted to show you these images because um, a lot of what we've been talking about is how, um, in some ways, how places rethink themselves. And these proposals are on the table for reimagining Liverpool as a super port. I don't know if you've seen these images, but um, um, they're very much uh, something that's being planned. And, you know, I think. Um, it's hard to imagine this as a reality, but it is. Uh, it is. You know, I, I, I look. You know, playing tennis, playing tennis on the Mersey. Um, uh, it's it, it's reminiscent of Dubai or Shanghai. Uh, this is the future in Liverpool. Um, however, um, and the reason I show you these is not. Is to do with like how do you find a way to rethink the place in which you find yourself? What are the mechanisms we've got? We do fall into traps if we can't think of a, of a different way out. So Liverpool Biennial, um, I promised to Asia I wouldn't go through all 60 of the artists. But, so I'll probably do about 50. Um, so uh, Liverpool Biennial is the UK Biennial of Contemporary Art. You're having a sneak preview. I haven't um, press launched yet. We're actually doing it on Monday. So um, uh, this is the first time anyone's seen our list. Um, the Biennale was founded in 1999 and in that time we've commissioned over 200 uh, artworks from 279 artists from 70 do different countries, done 33 collaborative neighbourhood projects and in the 10 weeks of the Biennial has 628,000 visitors which is an awful lot. Um, in my previous job, James mentioned I worked at Serpentine, where we very proudly used to announce that we had 800,000 visitors a year. So it's a, it's a hugely impactful and very important uh, event within the arts calendar. Um, there are strands to the exhibition, and um, uh, we're trying to work together to make it a more coherent curatorial proposition. And I'm just going to um, show you, or talk you through a few of the artists that are involved this year. So 10 weeks of exhibitions, 10 weeks of programmes. Instead of it being an exhibition that opens, I'm very keen to develop something which is vibrant every day, doesn't matter when you visit. So each weekend throughout the uh, biennial, there'll be a kind of mini festival uh, focusing on a different, um, uh, a different um, let's say, art form. I'll come to those in a second. And um, the idea is that it's a kind of living experience, not a, not a static exhibition project. So the weekends will include art and comedy, dance, uh, a young people's biennial, a, a, a whole weekend focused on drawing, a film festival, and a closing weekend where uh, I'm going to announce the, um, I'm going to use the last weekend of the biennial to announce the beginning <coughs> of the next 10 years. And I very uh, pompously called it changing the world from here at the moment. But um, <laughs> that's what we're trying to do. So I, <coughs> when we come up with a better title, I'll change it. But for the moment, that's what it's called. 60 artists, 18 countries, 13 venues. And we have this very beautiful space uh, in the centre here. It's the Cunard building, which uh, has a sister building in New, in New York. And so Cunard shipping, it's very important to uh, the, the town. Um, and I'm going to fly very quickly through some artists, because what I want to share with you is how I'm trying to think about the next 10 years. And it'd be very interesting if people can give me some feedback and also um, you know, uh, not maybe not at the end of this session, but if you see me around, just I, I'd love to hear your thoughts and reflect on it with you. So Superflex, who are, um, I've picked out people I think are relevant to this theme. They've noticed that when you come to Liverpool, a lot of the very grand architectures have to let signs. Um, they're empty, they're not being used. Um, so they're going to employ um, a number of people who are currently unemployed to paint banners that replicate the to let signs in the buildings in Liverpool, and those will be displayed in the Cunard. Um, Ming Wong, who's a very interesting artist from Singapore, who's um, um, making, he's done a remake of Chinatown, uh, the 1970s film, and um, he's going, he plays all the parts, and uh, he's, uh, and he's very, very good in all of them. And he's um, making links between Chinatown and Liverpool and other Chinatowns uh, across the world. Mona is make, Mona Hatun is making a new piece for us. Uh, Shiri Kavanda, who um, 
makes very beautiful uh, performance interventions. He's going to make some new work. This is a piece he did at Tate where he was kissing people through panes of glass. Um, well, I know that would work really well in Liverpool, but <laughs> he's going to make us a new piece, so I'm not sure what that's going to be. <laughs> but the reality, so put your mind back to where we were with, um, with the images of Peel Waters and um, Peel Holdings are the, are the people that own all of uh, the waters around there. And uh, this is a project by Jeanne von Houswick, which um, takes us to Anfield. Um, this is the reality. So the visions for the future is uh, taking place in a reality that looks like this, which is the result of um, um, many years of housing renewal policies that have led, have led to the decanting of these properties and people actually still trying to live in this environment. So this, this is Liverpool Football Club. And these are the streets around Liverpool Football Club. Um, people still live in some of these properties and um, Jeanne von Hauswick has been working in those communities and has um, be, we've been gifted a, um, a bakery that, that's no longer viable partly because of, partly because of the, the moving of people out of the area and we're working with young people training them to set up a community bakery but also building housing so within that context there's going to be uh, uh, <coughs> three houses right opposite the fo football club, uh, which will be renovated into um, into their former kind of uh, Georgian glory, Victorian glory, and um, a, a functioning bakery, uh, which will stand as a kind of monument to housing, which Jana um, feels is the battlefield of our time. And also Everton Park. Um, this is a park that was built on slum clearance. Someone was talking about slum clearance earlier. I can't remember who it was. Ian. Ian. Yeah. And um, what happened here was uh, a park in the 1980s was built on top of terraced housing that was, that was um, taken down. And um, we're working with um, field operations, James Corbett from Field Operations, who did a really beautiful project in New York called the High Line, some of you may have seen it, where they took a district used railway that kind of worms its way through uh, New York and have turned it into a spectacular uh, landscape environment. And also Fritz Haig, who's an LA-based artist, who um, together they're going to re-envisage the park and it's a project that will unfold over the next 10 years but is beginning with a small intervention this year where he's planting um, wildflowers, reintroducing wildflowers into the environment but also uh, food and um, uh, we'll be harvesting that in September. I think it's going to be quite interesting in relation to what Niels Norman is talking about tomorrow morning um, and uh, I think Niels has been working on his for a lot longer, three years if I can see him in my sight line now. Um, um, Tate, uh, Liverpool, uh, together with Sky Arts Ignition, have uh, commissioned Doug Aitken and David Ajay to make a, a new work, which will be um, a, a pavilion on the waterfront, very close to the Cunard. Um, John Comfra, who, uh, fantastic filmmaker, has made a film about the life of Stuart Hall, and it pieces together Stuart's impact as a kind of Politician. I think Stuart's very relevant to a lot of the discussions we're having here as well in terms of thinking about housing, um, migration, um, the work that he did at the Birmingham Centre for Cultural Studies and the occasional paper series, I think remain some of the most important work in terms of cultural studies and media theory in the world. So it's wonderful that um, we're going to be able to show this. And also Stuart's agreed to write and, and do a lecture, which I couldn't be more excited about. Um, Dora Garcia, who is um, working with Toxteth TV to do a community television project, and um, she'll be setting that up in the blue coat. And this, this is also relevant. David Panos and Anya Kirshner have just moved back to Athens, um, which uh, there's not so many people doing that at the moment. And um, they are looking, they've found the place when coinage was first mined and they are looking at the origins of money and coinage uh, in Greece and are using the format of a Greek tragedy to talk about money and the euro and the kind of economic collapse that we're seeing unfolding right now. Um, and Pedro Reyes um, is making a game, a board game, and it actually might even become a digital game if we can work it out. Um, uh, 
yeah, I won't go into that. Um, uh, but it's called The Game of Love, and it's um, where you'll be able to play a kind of relational aesthetics <coughs> game with people in cafes and bars in Liverpool with your partner to find out whether you're actually suited, whether you shouldn't be together. <laughs> um, uh, whether how sometimes, sometimes the right person is just the wrong person uh, in the moment, and sometimes the wrong person is so right in the moment, but you know it's the wrong person <laughs> long term, uh, etc. So Pedro has put this fantastic project together. Um, a crumbs Atari uh, Lebanese artist who's going to be looking at what's permissible, what's, what constitutes pornographic material from his place in the world. And Jorge Maki, this is a project for um, the Cultural Olympiad where we're improbably wedging a seven metre shipping container into a building and you will be able to stand underneath it. Okay, and finally, city states. Uh, in, in partnership, you know, the fantastic partnership with Liverpool John Moores University, who have, uh, who own this extraordinary post office sort sorting office, and um, I'm calling this a post postal industry project, and um, it's enormous, and um, they're working closely with us to, to let us have this two floors of this space, one for new contemporaries, and one for uh, what's called city states, which is where we invite cities from around the world to participate in the biennial. So Beirut. Belo Horizonte, Copenhagen, Gdansk, Hong Kong, Incheon, <laughs> Maka Chakala, I don't know how to say that, Oslo, Vilnius, uh, and that's it. So, um, how am I doing on time? Oh, good. Uh, I've got my alarm clock's going to go off, so <laughs> we all know and it's time to stop. So what I, I wanted to go through that just to give you a context of where we are for this year, but <coughs> what I really want to think about is how can... How is it possible for a biennial to rethink itself? What, what, what would be the way to do something that has a very long-term impact, but at the same time can really undertake research and really think about the value of art and, uh, and post-industry in, in a place like Liverpool? And so what I'm going to be announcing at the end of um, 2012 is a decade of activity, uh, 2013 to 2023. Uh, again, I'm calling it changing the world from here, but uh, I need to do some workshopping with colleagues to work out what we're going to call it. Uh, new possibilities, post-industry, urbanism, art and value in the 21st century. So moving away from the idea of a reinvention for each biennial and thinking about how I can bring artists back, maybe to do more than one biennial, to work with curators, to explore questions for longer durations, to think about how the biennial can operate as a focus, but within a 10-year period of research. So 10 years, five biennials, five new permanent public artworks, five new pieces of music, um, hopefully in collaboration with our colleagues in Liverpool, five new performances, plays, again, in collaboration, 10 lectures uh, called the Liverpool Lectures. I, um, at the Serpentine, along with my colleague, um, Hans Ulrich, I just did a series of marathons where we used to do 70 people over two days, and, and I'm, I'm kind of want to do the opposite, so just one a year, um, <laughs> but a really good one. And, and in these lectures, I, I'm going to invite um, people to really, you know, be, be resourced properly to think about and deliver something along the lines of a wreath lecture, but for cultural mobilism. <coughs> ten conferences, ten volumes, and five young people's biennials. With international partners, thinking about how does Liverpool connect to the world? Um, what is a you know, where are the places, post-industry, where are the other coastal cities, where are the shrinking cities, where are the places that have already grown? Um, these are the beginnings of conversations, but it will filter itself down. I'm very much sharing with you a thought process. I'm interested in hearing uh, back from you. So, um, And also thinking about how, how we can be um, more closely in partnership with our colleagues in the UK. How can people participate in the biennial? So co-commissioning thinking about touring differently, thinking about um, sharing resources and thinking about how people can create something happening uh, in Liverpool rather than it, it just happening in it without those connections. Um, obviously working cross art forms, so working with uh, the Philharmonic, working with the Everyman Playhouse, but also working with the, our brilliant colleagues in Manchester, so working with Alex Poots, uh, Manchester International Festival and also uh, Maria Balshaw at Manchester Art Galleries. And um, undertaking research, so thinking about how I can um, 
have people working alongside us who are who are writing about the work and publishing and thinking about how we can work with um, knowledge production institutions and universities and art schools and reinforcing the economy. Uh, I'm very excited. We just um, appointed a post, fifty percent with me and fifty percent with um, the art school, and um, that's a permanent role. So we'll be much more connected in terms of having uh, having a, a real relationship to, to that environment. And for me, the art school is absolutely key for Liverpool to operate properly. What what I think we need is a brilliant art school, brilliant artists coming out of the art school, great writing emerging from there, and people wanting to move there and and uh, stay there and uh, create galleries and 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 we can sit on that, but also be part of that. Uh, so. We're going to set up an international research centre, um, a curatorial training programme. We're going to work on curatorial exchange. I'm hoping to um, m increase my team by working through secondments nationally and internationally, create online journals, um, publications and broadcast. If people can't come to Liverpool, obviously I realise it's two hours away from London and eight and a half or something, nine hours away from here, <laughs> unless you fly, which is what I did, um, then we can broadcast new technologies make it possible for us to collapse geographies now. Oh, and that's the end. I just love this picture. It's got nothing to do with anything. <laughs> These are the dazzle ships. That they're so amazing. And um, I have no reason for showing it to you at all, except that I, I really, really like it. So um, let's dazzle them, maybe. That's what I should say. <laughs> um, no, I won't say that. Um, I finished early, as briefed, actually very early. Yeah. So.